Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today. So today what I would like to teach you is how to build strength for chaturanga. Um, we talk a lot about chaturangas, especially in a vinyasa style flow class. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me show you. So a lot of the times when we do a sun salutation, we, you know, we do the arms up, we do the arms down, we forward fold, we step the feet back, and then we come to the nefarious chaturanga where we rock the body forward and we hold a plank as we lower all the way down into a hovering push-up and then we push up to upward facing dog and then we come back to downward facing dog. Okay, that is what a traditional chaturanga looks like. Um, it is extremely, extremely challenging. Um, you have to build, I worked for years to, <laughs> my cat is joining us for chaturanga lessons. I worked for years to build the strength for chaturanga and there are some days where I still cannot do it and so I modify to um, my knees on the ground for chaturanga and that's totally okay. So what we're gonna focus on today is building your strength for chaturanga. So if you don't have um, some props nearby, I would recommend two blocks and either a foam roller or a rolled up yoga mat or exercise mat. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna open the chest. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to lay along this foam roller with my head and my spine along the foam roller. Okay, with my feet flat on the mat. And then I'm gonna open my arms out to the side in like kind of a lazy cactus shape. So what this does is this opens the pec muscles, the pec major and the pec minor. The pectoralis minor is super hard to stretch and basically your shoulder girdle has to fall away like it's doing here in order to stretch that muscle. So we're gonna open up the chest first and we wanna about think about having a lot of space in the chest when we're doing chaturanga. Otherwise we tend to like roll our shoulders forward and kind of just collapsing, and that's not good. Okay, so we're gonna spend a few minutes here, not a few minutes, a few breaths, allowing the chest to open. I mean, really, this just feels good. You could just do this any time. And then you can slowly sit up or you can slowly roll to one side as you're ready. And you can move that foam roller or the rolled up yoga mat out of the way. And now we're gonna lay all the way down on our backs, flat on the mat. So the next exercise we're gonna do is really gonna engage kind of those lower abdominal muscles. So. Find a neutral spine down on the mat first. So you don't need to have your lower back all the way flat on the mat for this portion. You just wanna be able to find a nice long neutral spine and then you're gonna bring the knees up with the shins parallel to the floor, lengthen the arms along your sides and we're just gonna do alternate toe touches. So we're gonna slowly lower the left toes down towards the mat keeping the abs hugged in and the front ribs knitted together. Lift the left leg back up and then lower the right toes down to the ground. Keep the ribs knitted together. Inhale, lift back up. Good, left leg, toes touch down to the ground. Keeping your spine nice and long. Try not to let your low back lift off the mat too far. Right leg, right toes touch, nice and slow. There's no rush. Good, left leg, toes touch, draw the belly in. Sometimes it helps to exhale on your way up. Right toes come down, touch the mat, and slowly lift back up. Good, so you can roll onto your side to sit up or you can rock and roll to come up. The next exercise we're going to do is a serratus push-up. 
So come to your tabletop. I'm going to show you what I mean. So the serratus is um, a muscle that helps with the protraction and retraction of the shoulder blades, which we need for the chaturanga movement. So I'm going to show you how to do these serratus push-ups. So the first thing I want you to do is to keep your abs hugged in for the whole thing. Okay, I don't want you to just let your belly hang. Okay, we need to keep the abs pulled in, the ribs knitted together to keep our low back nice and long and protected. So take your wrists directly underneath your shoulders. And then keeping the abs hugged in, I want you to drop your chest towards the mat. This is a super, super subtle movement and then press it away, press the chest away from the mat. Let the chest come back towards the mat, drawing the shoulder blades together. Exhale, allow the shoulder blades to wrap around the side of the ribs, keep the belly button pulled in three more times, lower the chest down towards the mat. Exhale, press the floor away, protract the shoulder blades then retract the shoulder blades like you were trying to pinch something in between them. Exhale, press the floor away, allow the shoulder blades to wrap around your sides. We'll do one more, lower the chest down, keep the abs hugged in. Exhale, press the floor away. Good, so now let's do some midi mini chaturanga push-ups, okay? So when we do a modified chaturanga, we leave our knees down on the mat and you can let the feet hover or you can leave the feet down on the floor for this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep our elbows hugged in at our sides and we're gonna do five little mini chaturanga push-ups. So bring the hips in line with the shoulders and knees and then we're gonna slowly lower down, keeping the elbows hugged in, press up. Let's do four more. Inhale down, exhale, press the floor away. Three more, inhale down, exhale, press. Two more, inhale down, exhale, press. Last one, inhale down, exhale, press. Phew, that's quite the workout. I mean, it's, you know, you would think it would be super easy because your knees are down on the mat, but I know my triceps are, they're burning a little right now. So now let's work on the muscles around the head of your humerus. Your humerus is your upper arm bone. So we wanna work on strengthening these muscles for chaturanga. So how we're gonna do that is we're going to do a flow from dolphin pose to plank pose. So to come into dolphin, interlace the fingers and press your elbows down into your mat. Okay, you want them in kind of a V shape. Tuck your toes under and lift your hips up off the mat like you were coming into downward facing dog, okay? So this one can be challenging, so move very slowly and carefully here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flow from dolphin and we're gonna come into plank. So you may need to adjust your feet a little bit here so that you bring your shoulders over your elbows and then exhale to lift the hips up and back, coming back into your dolphin. So just kind of find and adjust what works for you. Your distance may be different than you think. Now inhale to come back to plank, bringing the hips in line with the shoulders and heels. Exhale to lift the hips up and back, dolphin. Three more times. Inhale, bring the chest down, reach the crown of head forward. Exhale, press the floor away with the elbows, lift the hips up and back. Two more. If you're super advanced and you wanna to try to touch your nose, down to the mat, you can. Exhale, lift the hips up and back. Last one, coming to your plank. Hello, cat. Exhale, press the floor away. Come back to dolphin. Exhale, lower the knees down. Take the knees wide, big toes together. Sit back for child's pose. On your next inhale, press forward into tabletop and we're gonna lower our body all the way down to the mat, onto our bellies. So now we're gonna work on our um, rhomboids, which are muscles that are in between the shoulder blades that we need for that retraction. So what I'd like you to do, start with your forehead down on the mat and we're gonna turn our palms away from our bodies so our thumbs are gonna point up towards the ceiling 
and then I want you to draw the shoulder blades back together on the back of your body and reach the shoulder heads back, lifting up very slightly in the chest. Your glutes should be totally relaxed here. And then exhale to come back down. I hope you feel this. I definitely, it takes a while to get the hang of it, but thumbs point up towards the ceiling. Try again, draw the shoulder blades together, lift the shoulder heads slightly up off the mat. You should feel like you're kind of doing a baby cobra in the upper body, but your legs and glutes should be totally relaxed. Exhale to lower back down. Let's do that two more times. Draw the shoulder blades together, reach the shoulder heads back, peel the chest up off the floor just slightly, and exhale to come back down. Last one, draw the shoulder blades together, lift the shoulder heads back, reach the chest forward, thumbs point up towards the ceiling, and exhale to come back down. Good, inhale, press to tabletop, transition to seated. So this is where you might want blocks. For me, <laughs> I know that I need blocks because I have really short arms. If you have nice long arms where you can sit in Dandasana or staff pose and you can reach the ground, you don't need blocks. Me, <laughs> I can't reach it. So I like to use blocks next to my hips to help me with this. So this is gonna be kind of a complicated move, so we're gonna kind of progress through it together. So take your hands into the blocks leaving your heels down on the mat. I want you to hollow out your belly here. Really knit those front ribs together, like fuse your front ribs together. As you press, yes, as you press into the blocks, lifting your bottom up off the ground. Hold it for three, two, one. Exhale down, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. And I really want you to be careful about your shoulders not crowding up towards your ears, but really pressing away pressing into the blocks, drawing the shoulder blades down the back. Ready? Press your hands into the block, lift the hips up or onto the mat, hold for three, two, one, lower back down. Let's do that three more times. Press into the floor or your blocks, lift the hips up, hold, hollow out the belly, fuse the ribs together, three, two, one, lower down, Let's do that two more times. Press into the floor blocks, draw the shoulder blades down the spine, hollow out the belly, draw the belly button in, exhale, lower back down, last one. Press into the floor blocks, lift the hips up, draw the belly in, knit the front ribs together, exhale, lower back down. Okay, so watch me for this next one and then we'll do it together. We're gonna do the same thing, pressing the hips up off the mat, but then we're gonna transition to reverse tabletop, okay? Getting our little back body involved, getting the booty involved, lifting the hips up towards the ceiling, and then we're gonna lower the hips back down and then set them down. Okay, so be really intentional about your shoulder placement here. We really wanna keep the shoulders engaged to protect the rotator cuff. So really you wanna be pressing, you wanna be moving very slowly, not quickly as we do this. Okay, we're gonna do this three times. So press the hands into the blocks, lift the hips up, engage the abs, and then we're gonna rock onto the soles of our feet, slowly bending the knees, bringing the hips up towards the ceiling, coming into reverse tabletop, and then exhale to lower back down coming to your hold, your L-sit, and then lowering the hips back down to the mat. Good, let's do that two more times together. So press into your Dandasana <laughs> lifted L-sit, and then slowly rock onto the soles of the feet, nice and slow, no rush, protecting your shoulders, press into the blocks, lift the hips up towards the ceiling, exhale, take the hips back down, come back into your L-sit, Exhale, lower the hips back down to the mat. One more time. I know your shoulders are screaming. I know mine are. Press into the floor blocks. Lift the hips up. Rock onto the soles of the feet. Slowly bring the hips parallel with the shoulders and knees if you can. Press the floor or blocks away. And lower back down. And come all the way down. Good, take a moment. Let your shoulders relax. Just take a breath. 
You can set your blocks off to the side for now. We are done with them. And then we're going to come in to a kneeling side plank. So start with your knees down on the mat. And then we're going to take our left hand down to our sides, fingers pointing towards the short end of the mat. So you'll be facing towards the long end of the mat. Keep that left knee down on the ground and extend the right leg out, sole of the foot flat on the mat. Take the right hand either to the right hip. Make sure our wrist is directly underneath our shoulder. And you can leave the hand on the hip or you can reach the hand up towards the ceiling, really lifting that right hip up towards the ceiling, bringing your hips in line with your knees and your front toes. The more we press our hips forward, the more we're gonna feel engagement. Good, really lift that hip nice and high. Press the floor away with your left hand. Good, keep breathing here. And then we're going to slowly lower the hips back down to the floor, step the uh, right leg back in, and we'll switch to the other side. So plant the right hand out on your side, and then step that left leg out to the side, sole of the feet flat on the floor. And then we're going to take the left hand to left hip or reach it up towards the sky, your choice. We want to make sure our right shoulder is stacked right over our right wrist. And we're going to hold here for about five breaths. Press your hips forward, draw the belly in, lift up through that top hip, long spine. Press the sole of that left foot down into your mat. Press the floor away. And lower down, come back to the middle. All right, let's use everything that we've learned so far, and we're gonna practice a modified chaturanga, and then we're gonna practice a full chaturanga if you feel up for it. If you're not feeling up for it today, don't worry about it. So face back towards the short end of your mat. We'll plant the hands, and we're gonna start out on our knees. So walk your knees back so that you can bring your hips in line with your shoulders and knees. You can lift the feet up or you can leave them down on the mat, whatever works for you. You wanna make sure your wrists are stacked underneath your shoulders. We wanna hug the shoulders into the sockets. So what I mean by that is don't dump into your shoulders, but press the floor away and hug the top of the arm bone into the shoulder socket. Push the floor away, broaden through your collarbones, pull the belly in, and then we're gonna slowly bend the elbows to come down and hover. And then exhale to press back up. Let's do that together two more times. Hug the elbows in, hug the tops of the arm bones into the shoulder sockets. Slowly lower down, inhale, hover. Exhale, press the floor away to come back up. Last one. Inhale to slowly lower down. Keep the abs pulled in, front ribs knitted together. Exhale, press the floor away to come back up. Okay, if you are ready to try a full chaturanga, you can do it with me. If not, just keep doing the modified chaturanga. It's totally fine. So for a full chaturanga, we're gonna start by coming into plank. Okay, so bringing the hips in line with the shoulders and heels. The first thing we're gonna do is rock the body forward, coming onto our toes. And then we're gonna press the floor away, keeping the shoulders hugged into the shoulder socket, keeping the elbows hugged in. As we slowly lower down, take the body all the way down to the mat. Good, let's try that one more time. So press into your tabletop, take a breath, relax. Come back into your plank. Good, find a nice strong plank, draw the abs in, lever the hips towards the chin, rock the body forward. And then exhale, lower all the way down to the floor. Good. Now take the hands underneath the shoulder heads for everybody. We're gonna do a little bit of a cobra to stretch our abs out. So press into the palms, reach the chest forward, draw the shoulders back, broaden through your chest. And exhale all the way back down. 
Maybe try a sphinx pose, so bringing the forearms down to the mat. Forearms are parallel, reaching the chest forward, drawing the shoulder heads back, broadening through the clavicles, lengthening the tailbone down towards the heels, just finding a stretch in the chest, stretch in the belly. I hope your shoulders are talking to you in a good way a little bit right now. I know mine are on fire <laughs> right now. Good. We'll lower all the way back down. Press to child's pose. Reach those arms forward. So we want to make sure to stretch out those muscles that we just used. So come to seated or come to kneeling. And we're going to stretch out our shoulders. So take the arms into a cactus shape. And it doesn't matter which elbow comes on top first because we're going to do the other side just the same. So wrap one elbow underneath the other, taking the backs of the arms together. And then tuck the bottom fingers into the top palm. Okay, so we're coming into eagle arms. So to really get the stretch, try to bring the elbows in line with the shoulders. Allow your shoulder blades to wrap around the outside ribs, like so. And if you really want to feel a stretch in the back of the neck, dip the chin slightly into the chest. Good. Go ahead and release the hands. Take the hands back out into that cactus shape. And now you do the opposite of whatever you just did. So tuck the other elbow underneath. Bring the backs of the hands together. And then tuck the bottom fingers into the top palm. Again, lifting the elbows as high as you can comfortably get them. No higher than the shoulders. Draw the shoulder blades away from each other. Protract them around the sides of your ribs and then dip the chin slightly into the chest. Four breaths here. You can go ahead and release the arms. We're gonna stretch through the chest so take the hands behind you, interlace the fingers, make a fist, and lower that fist towards the floor, drawing the shoulder heads back, drawing the shoulder blades together, and then drawing the shoulder blades down the back. Straightening the arms if you can, but if you need to keep your elbows bent, no problem. Broadening through the collarbones, Chest is wide and proud. And if this fist doesn't work for you, if you really are not enjoying this, you can just hold opposite forearms or opposite elbows. Release the hands. Change the interlace of the fingers to move everything over one space. Let's do that one more time. So press that fist down towards the ground, opening through the chest. Drawing the shoulder heads back and down. And releasing the hands. Take a big breath in, big breath out. Great job. I hope this helped. I hope this helped you understand Chaturanga just a little bit more. Um, if you have any questions, please post them below. And I look forward to doing yoga with you all again soon. Bye.